Hey everybody, it's Rory from ANS Gear, and today we're going to learn how to do some general maintenance on your paintball markers. Okay, we're going to look at a Tipman TIPX pistol. We're going to take it apart, do uh, do a breakdown on it so you guys can see what's inside, and kind of just look at the potential maintenance points of the gun and how it physically or what it's required to take them apart. Um, so you can obviously look at the manual for stuff like this, but it's actually sometimes easier for people to see it done and they can follow along and uh, do it themselves. So uh, rather than looking at pictures in a book, well, you can look at pictures on a screen and go from there. So always what we want to do is make sure the gun is safe to work on, so it's degassed, that it is um, safe to move around and function. This is stuck. So let's try to get this thing out. So this is a little tight in there. Toit. So let's kind of see if we can pop this thing out of here. Don't ask me why this is so tight with a brand new gun out of the box. It doesn't want to budge. So let's get the barrel out. There's always a way around it. Get the barrel out, set it there. If you ever run into this problem where your front, basically this is your CO2 cap right here, it won't come off. Um, you can disassemble the gun around it and then take it off later. Now, we'll look at this when we get it off and try to figure out why it's not coming off there. So if you run into that same problem, you'll know why it's not coming off there. Uh, so normally we would just pop this right off, twist it, pop it out, but we'll check and see why. So we've got the barrel out. Um, we're going to separate our top half from our bottom half, or our left from our right. Obviously, we want to make sure the magazine is out. We'll break down the mag later on, too, so uh, if you do get this dirty and you need to clean it, you can see how that comes apart and goes back together. It's a really simple design inside of there, although you just take it apart quickly, you'll lose a lot of parts. So we don't want to do that. Uh, so we'll separate the halves. We've got the magazine out. Um, I know this doesn't have a CO2 tank in it because it's brand new, so we'll pop that out of there, uh, and we'll go from there. So let's take our, our screws out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that we're going to move out, and then the bottom is clipped together down here. If you look down there, you can see that there's a little latch right there, uh, just a, like a snap lock. So we'll get all the screws out, and then we'll put it back together. So it does, uh, it is handy to have a screwdriver like this to loosen everything up, but it is not necessary. Just makes it way more fun. All right, so we're gonna turn it over, drop all the screws out. And you'll notice that there's one really long screw, a couple medium length screws, and then two short screws. And they are specific as to where they need to go. The long screw goes in the middle at the top. The two short screws go at the front underneath the, uh, the barrel shroud, if you want to call it, the front breech block. And then the medium length screws go everywhere else, so bottom, middle, top front, top back. And it is important that you put them back in the right spots. Let's just see if that loosened that up a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. What I'm thinking is possibly the, the inner sleeve that's inside here was is not machined right, and it doesn't let this pop out, which would be interesting because I don't ever see stuff like that, uh, especially from Tipman. So let's open this up. We've got all our screws out, and we're going to pop everything uh, or pop the top off and get everything out. Now, this particular gun right here, when you take this half off, so this would be your left side or your left half, um, it's very, very easy for everything to want to jump out on the inside there. So as we pull everything out, I'm going to try to hold it in place by pushing down on the shroud. Uh, the breech block, the spring, the bolt, the regulator, everything is in the back and all that stuff is under the mainspring tension right here. So we, we just want to make sure we don't lose that stuff or fly apart on us. So as you can see, I'm just kind of prying this up through the bottom right here. I'm going to wedge my screwdriver in and just kind of easily pull it apart. I don't want to overdo it yet because I don't want to go too far. So you can see I've just cracked the bottom open a little bit right there. 
Now I'm gonna hold this down. I'm gonna hold the breech um, block down, barrel shroud, whatever you wanna call it, and I'm gonna keep wiggling my pieces up while holding this piece down. It is important. You can see the, the breech right there. If that pops up, the spring that you can see under tension right back here will bow up and just sling everything out of there. So we're gonna try to not let that happen. That's the optimal word here. Not have that fly apart. All right, so we took that out and you can see the insides are, nothing's in there. The safety stayed in this side, which is pretty common um, that the safety likes to stay in this half. But we can always just take it right out like that. And then we could put it back in there if we wanted to. But since we're gonna pull it all out of there, we don't really need to. All right, so until I release the tension on this whole thing up here by either removing the front uh, barrel shroud or popping the regulator out through the back right here, this whole thing still could possibly pop up and go everywhere. So to, to undo that, I'm gonna pull the, the front barrel block out. And you can see it's just a, a shroud that the barrel runs through. And that still leaves this right here. So this is still under pressure with the spring. So to easily move around inside the box here, I'm gonna pull it apart. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. You could um, remove this part first, but you would still have to hold all this down. It's actually easier to do that rather than trying to work around it. That's all you need to do is just, you can grab the puncture assembly up here and you could slide that out. You can grab the, the rod and pull that through here. And sometimes the rod will stick into the regulator, but you can always just do that and get it out. And now we can hold on to the back here. So this is the, the body of our bolt. I'm gonna hold on to that and I'm gonna wiggle this up and get it out of here. And pull that out there. And then I can lift this up and I can set this down. So this spring is compressed down like this. This goes around like that though. And it's basically jammed up against this thing. So when this is compressed, it wants to go boing and pop apart. I don't know if it actually makes that noise, but it wants to do that. All right, so inside here, a couple things we have. This is the mag release mechanism. When the magazine is inside here, this section right here actually pushes on the top of the mag. And when the magazine is in the locked down position like that, the magazine comes up through the gun, hits this part like that, and releases the magazine to start pushing the balls up and out of the gun, or out of the magazine. So that's what this piece is for. So it is important that it's in the gun. If this is not in the gun, when you put the magazine up there, the balls will never be released, won't ever come out of the mag. So it is important, and it is directional in the way that it sits. It needs to sit like that, not like this or however else you could try to figure it fit it in there. Really only go two ways though. Just like that. Alright, so let's uh, let's move on. We'll get everything else out of the gun. We'll take that piece out and set it over there. Ball detent. As with all tipping guns, it's very important this detent that it is not worn. So this little arm that goes up and down, we want to make sure that that stays um, doing that job. Over time the gun sits uh, with the bolt just sitting over the top of this, compressing it down. So it just sits over time like this. Uh, this will wear and it will lose its ability to pop back up like that. And it'll just sit like this always. It's not doing you any favors like that. The balls, it's not keeping only one ball in the breech at a time. Uh, you'll have multiple feedings, you'll have chopping paint, you have all sorts of problems. So make sure that this is new and fresh and always in good condition. It'll make your gun work better. And secondly, when you go to install it, you wanna make sure that you do it properly. Um, it really does just sit in here, just like that. It's not hard to put in, but this is the proper way to put it so that the ramped section is facing the bolt so that when the bolt slides forward, like a disc, it pushes that arm down. If it's the other way around, like this, when the bolt comes forward, it'll hit that arm and it will rip it right off. And then it's no good. So make sure you put that in the right way. The ramped side
facing the bowl. Pull our trigger out. The trigger does have a pin that goes through it. We have our arm that the trigger hooks up to. And this arm activates our one-way valve, or our on-off valve, I should call it, which is back inside of here. So again, this is important as well. And it's very important where this sits when we go to reassemble the gun. So this is it. The whole gun is out. Mag release, don't need to really take that out, but you can. There's a little spring on the bottom of it. You want to make sure you don't lose the spring. It just sits in there like that. Nothing fancy about putting that in there. And then our housing. Now I'm going to try to get this apart because it looks like it's jammed in there. It looks to me like this front uh, housing assembly is machined, it wasn't fully machined out, and it's causing the release here not to pop all the way out. Let's see if I can just tap this thing out of here. and actually get it out. Well, slightly coming out. There it goes. And I was right. You can actually see inside that. Well, you might not be able to see. You can see like weird lines on the inside here. Like the machining wasn't right on it. And it causes this to stick. It doesn't want to slide inside of here. The other side's actually fine. This side, very, very tight. So you could take a little bit of sandpaper and just run that through there. Just take some of those lines out, little lumps, and uh, you'll be fine. But again, interesting. I'm going to keep that one out because I'm going to replace it so that uh, a customer doesn't ever end up with that gun. That would be no good. So our half is empty. We can start looking at our pieces and what possibly you might need to do maintenance on. So um, starting from the front, the puncture assembly right here, the trigger when it's inside like that, the trigger rocks up against it and it pushes this piece down, which pushes the pin in the front there into the CO2, the 12 gram CO2 and it punctures that 12 gram CO2 and that's what releases air into the gun. So when you drop a 12 gram into a TPX or a TCR and you close the lid or shut the door on it, depending on the gun, it does not gas up right away. You need to pull the trigger one time. So you need to pull the trigger so it pushes this forward, punctures the CO2 cartridge and releases the gas into here. If you ever get a leak in this area out the front, it is typically because this face right here is bad or cracked or dirty or something because the 12 gram needs to seal against this piece right here and um, it is just not doesn't make a good seal uh, and it will leak or the other reason could be that it is this 12 gram is loose against the front here if that's the case this front cap that goes on here and tightens down it doesn't really tighten down it just locks the front down um, is too shallow so this ridge that you see this uh, this front piece the bump is too deep meaning it is not sticking out far enough so it does not push hard enough on the 12 gram to push it uh, firmly up against the seat right here this is adjustable if you loosen up this backside and pull it all the way out which I might be able to do if this is one that is not set so you can take this all the way out that so that's the locking part of the screw and then there's another screw inside there which is actually this one and you can adjust it by turning it you can make this stick out further by backing it up you can make it uh, come back further and that will control how much pressure is on the co2 cartridge to seal it up against the puncture valve so one of those two things could be a reason if you're getting a leak through the front dependent on which is the problem so kind of check them both out all right, put that back together. So that's this section there. Reach, don't have to worry about too much. This back here is your regulator. We'll pull the reg apart. And it uh, doubles actually as the adapter point for your remote line. So if you remove this screw out of the back right here, this plug, 
you can put the remote line in that comes off of here and it sticks out the back of your frame and that's where you connect a remote line to it. If you do that setup where you're running remote line, you must have a empty 12 gram cartridge in here. Otherwise, the air coming in through here would just go through the pipe and then back out the front and it would just leak. It would Nothing would seal it in the front side. So you need an empty one and it will uh, create a seal inside of there. So that's what this is right here. We're gonna remove the reg or take it apart. The transfer tubes that go between all the little sections, so from the puncture pin back here to the regulator, from the regulator to the bolt, uh, bolt body, valve body right there, they all have tiny little O-rings on them. Very, very small, very thin urethane O-rings. Uh, if you get a leak in the midsection of the body or you're listening closely to the side of the, uh, the body or the body pieces, these could be the problem. So check those O-rings too. And again, they are tiny. So if you suspect them as being a problem, just remove them and replace them. So we're gonna pull apart the regulator right here. Now the regulator houses two different components inside of it, the reg and the pressure relief valve. So to adjust the regulator, you would stick an Allen key in here and you would adjust this large outer section. I think this is a 3 16 So by turning this part here, you're adjusting the actual velocity of the, of the gun. By putting, a, I think it's a 1 8 key, down inside of here, you're controlling the pressure relief valve. And the pressure relief valve is designed so that if the input pressure coming into the gun itself exceeds, I believe, 350 PSI, it will bleed, it will leak intentionally so that you don't overpressurize the gun. So if you have a leak coming through the regulator at the back, make sure your pressure relief valve is set properly and if that's not it, then you'd want to get in and start rebuilding the reg. But reg maintenance is pretty simple. There's not too many parts inside of there that you need to worry about. So let's pull this piece off of here. We're going to remove the reg seat out of here. If you ever get the reg not functioning, it's uh, supercharging, meaning overcharging, or uh, velocity is super erratic, it's all over the place, Check this reg seat right here, because this can be the problem or the culprit for that. It just sits around the pin and spring like so. There's one O-ring to check right there if you get a leak out the end of your regulator. Uh, and that's on the, this side of the reg, that's about it. On the other side, we can pull this top off here and we'll see what's inside. So this is just your reg cap. Underneath that is going to be the reg spring and then your piston right here. Now your piston houses the relief valve in it as well. So from the other side, push it out with an Allen key. And then you can see right here, you have one main O-ring on the piston and then internally right here, this is your pressure relief valve. If you unscrew this and pull it out, you'll see you've got this adjustment screw, um, a pin and spring underneath there as well. So all those pieces working together to create a regulator and a, like a, almost like a safety valve kind of mechanism in there. So check all those pieces, check the O-ring for wear, make sure it's greased up, put it back together, and then go through and reset it. We don't really need to reset it because we're not making any adjustments to the pressure relief valve itself. We would need to chrono this gun though once we got it back together because we have completely removed the, the adjustment part for the regulator so we never know exactly where that is when we put it back together. Uh, we're going to drop in our reg seat. I'm going to look at the seat right here, look for any signs of wear on it like we talked about, and then obviously put it back in with the good side or the side that I feel looks the best facing up to make a seal against the... Um, See it kind of down in there, I think. Well, maybe not. It looks like it's a little dark down in there. Uh, so it seals up against the pin properly. All right. So that's back together. Pretty simple. Moving on to the bolt. This is like the last major part of the gun right here that we need to worry about. 
So the bolts, obviously you want to keep it greased up, you know, lubricated, and you want to keep it clean. Don't if a dirty bolt doesn't work really well, it's because it's dirty. Uh, but that's pretty simple on this side. You really don't have any O-rings or anything that you're going to monkey around with. You have one on the front right here. This just helps seal the bolt when it's in the forward position in the breech. So obviously check it, make sure that it is. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That it's clean. There you go. Not chipped, broken, or anything like that. Uh, two sections of this that we're going to take apart. We're going to take the front off, so the what the you call it the bolt guide or the power tube or whatever. It depends on what you how you want to call it. I'm going to call it the bolt guide because it just guides the bolt. Um, very similar to a power tube in like an A5 or a 98. We have our on-off valve back here, and then we have the guts of our bolt assembly, our bolt body. So this part right here basically is the on and off to the, the gas flowing through the gun. Uh, this piece is inside the Phenom as well, or something very similar to it. And it's akin to like an auto mag, very sim similar in design as how their pin works, their on off pin. We're gonna remove this off of here. Now this is very important when we're taking these screws out and putting them back in that we do not cross thread them or strip them out as we're putting them in because we are just going into aluminum and if you don't have this set properly you could easily strip this screw out. Quite a bit of Loctite on this one. I usually don't see so much Loctite on them, brand new. Whoever assembled this gun was heavy handed. But that actually is not a bad thing it'll keep this from backing itself off and falling off while you're playing. All right, so I'll set that down. We'll talk about this. You have two O-rings on the bottom that marry it up with this right there. And then your on and off pin, which is right here. So when this is under pressure, the pin will actually pop out like that. And it'll be sitting against the gun like that. When you pull the trigger, you the trigger moves and it moves this arm back and forth and this arm kind of sticks up behind that pin and it pushes the pin forward which lets the gas flow through the body and out the front of the gun, doing some other things as well, make a, make a simplified version of what's happening and uh, causing it to shoot. Now this, what I typically see happen with these is they become loose on here. As soon as this becomes slightly loose on here, this will come away from the body. This O-ring, one of them will pop out and it'll start to leak. It'll get trapped. Uh, it'll just make it so that the, the, the valving itself is not working. And uh, if that happens, you just need to retighten it. But never, if you see an issue where you have an O-ring that has popped out or something, never just tighten it down. You always want to take it off, check your O-rings, inspect everything, make sure it looks good and put it back together. This also does come apart. You can take that out. You can put an Allen key down in here. If I have the right one sitting somewhere. There we go. I might not be able to get it by hand. I can't. So I can take this. And I can back that up. And inside here is a small O-ring which helps activate the valve when the pin is running through these O-rings. It uh, makes them work. Here's your valve. This, if you ever had an auto mag, you know that this is very similar in looks to an auto mag. And then sitting below that also is another tiny O-ring down there. So this sits like this, the valve on top of it, like this, this one sits on top of it. Oops, I lost it. Basically it's like a sandwich with this being in the middle and then that sits on top. I'm not gonna be able to hold that in my fingers. I bet you I could do it like this though. Like that, like that, and then like this. So it sits like that and then the pin goes through. And when that pin moves back and forth inside of there, it either lets the air flow through or blocks it off so that uh, your gun shoots or it doesn't. 
Again, a simplified version of how that works, but that's your on-off valve inside the gun. So let's actually put that back together. Rarely do I see a problem with these O-rings and the valve or anything like that. What I always see as a problem is these two, when this becomes loose, and then it just starts leaking. So always check that. Tends to be a culprit more often than not. there. This slides back in. When we go to actually reassemble this into the gun, it's very important how that sits inside of there because we can damage it or break it if we don't put it together right. Those are going to pop on there when we're done. So this part here will separate the top from the bottom. There's a flat spot on the stem here, which you can get a pair of um, a wrench on there. My hand is super greasy. So let's see if I have a towel anywhere. I don't. So let's just see if I can get it by hand. If not, I don't want to damage this in any way. Hmm. <laughs> oh, here we go. Just out of eyesight. A roll of paper towel. Savior. Maybe. Nope, still can't get it. This one's really on there. Let's try to get this apart a different way. We'll take the back end off first, and then we can at least see what's going on inside of there. We're going to use this tool to get this snap ring out. So this ring that's on here, uh, without the proper tool to get it out, can be very, very difficult to, uh, to move it. This one right here, you just insert the little pins into the ring, and you're going to squeeze it together and have it come out. These look like they're a bit too big for these holes, so I knew there was a reason why I brought this smaller setup. And those ones will pop right in there, just like that. We'll squeeze it together. You can see it squeezes the ring together, and that will let us kind of just pull it right out of there. Whenever you take one of these in or put it out, it's a good idea to always have your thumb or finger over the top of it so that if it slips off of here, it doesn't go shooting across the room and get lost, because it definitely will. Sometimes you can pop on that thing and just get it to pop out, but not with that one. There we go. All right, so that pops out of there. This is basically the in really the internals that you need to worry about. If you need to take this off, there's an O-ring that seals the two pieces together right there. It's just a joiner for this. I would need to set this probably in the vise downstairs to break it apart for the first time. Uh, put a towel around it, gently put it into a, a soft jaw on the vise, and then put this with the wrench and pop it open. It's just my hands are a little too slippery to get that off right now, even with the towels on there. Um, so we've got a spool style piece that goes inside of here. O-ring, O-ring, O-ring right there. We have a pin or a spring, which helps reset this closed after it is fired. And then on the back right here, we've got two O-rings. So you're going to be looking at um, one, two, three, four, five, if you are breaking this apart for any kind of maintenance. Again, what you do for maintenance wise, inspect the O-ring, clean the O-ring, relube the O-ring. And don't overdo it. You don't need a ton of grease or oil on there just enough to make it covered and to make it work properly. Too much is just as bad as not enough. So put that back in there. I just pushed it back down. Got my back cap. I'm going to put that on. Do want to make sure that this spring does go into the hole in the middle down there. So you could drop that in first if you wanted to. Or if you're uncomfortable with doing that and hoping that everything lines up properly, you could just put this on and then do it upside down. So that's the way I like to do it. Like that, and then like that. Once we're in, we see we've got that recessed ring around there. We're going to put that back together. Squeeze, and then 
going to hold on to it with my thumb so that it doesn't get lost. I've had these fly off, hit me in the face, go 30 feet across a room, you never find it. These things pop off, they're pretty much goners, so don't lose them. Back together like that. Perfect. Let's put our one way or our on off, I keep calling it a one way, our on off back together. Put our screws in. Tons of Loctite, making it difficult to push through here. See all that on there? That's a lot of Loctite. You can see it popping up off the bottom. Make sure that gets wiped off, because we don't want that to be sitting in between the body of the on-off and the body of our, our bolt here. So it might make it so that it doesn't seal properly. Wipe that away. All right. So now we're going to put this on. We want to make sure that our pin is sticking backwards so that it can mate up with the, uh, the arm there. And then we're going to thread these in. Whenever you're threading into aluminum, like we are right now, we want to obviously make sure that we have a uh, the thread started properly. So the best way to do that is to go backwards and wait to feel the screw drop into position and then go ahead and tighten it down so that it uh, is perfectly lined up with the threads and you're not running a chance of cross-threading it or stripping it out. Because uh, it is definitely possible putting a steel screw into aluminum like that, you run the chance of just tearing those threads out if they're not lined up properly. And then once we get it in, and we feel it snug up against the bottom, we do not want to over tighten it. So uh, give it a good snug, tighten it on there, but don't overdo it. because You can just rip the threads out by over tightening the screw. All right, so we're back together here. We can go ahead and start reassembling the gun in all of its glory. So we're gonna have this here. We're gonna have our spring on here. Unlike some guns, this spring is not directional. It can go on either way. It does not have a tapered end and then a big end. This spring is just gonna usually float around on here, just like in a Tipman gun. There is a little section that you can drop it in in the breech. You can put it in there and it will sit there for now, but it will not stay there. So don't worry about it coming apart. It's gonna go right in there like that. So we're gonna drop this in and we want to put our detent in before that, and that way we can slide this in. So I'm going to leave this out. I'm going to drop my block in, and I'm going to make sure that that's seated properly. You can see down inside of there the detent arm sticking up right there. You want to make sure that that sits properly in the cutout for the breech, and then obviously the ramp is facing the right direction this, press it down, and set it inside there. Now this is going to want to move all over the place right now. So there's a couple things you can do to keep that from happening. We can take the long screw, we can set it right there, and we can just tighten it down just till it pushes up against the block. And that will keep everything in place for now. That'll let us rotate this around and, and move it. It'll let us just Kind of just situate everything so that it stays where we need it to stay. That's good right there. Uh, let's put the rest of it together. And remember, I'm going to leave that out so that I can fix that later. So from here, we're going to assemble the puncture valve, the trigger, the linkage arm, and the regulator at the back. So let's put in our linkage arm because it needs to sit at the bottom. So we're going to drop that in here. And like I said, this piece right here, the on-off valve, right there, it cannot be sticking out. So if you see it like that, you need to push it back in so that it is not sticking out. Oops. Alright, so 
that's down in there. And notice I haven't rotated this down quite yet. We're going to connect all this stuff first. So this is going to go like this, and then it's going to rotate back down. Actually, sorry, like this. So this is going to go in here, and that's going to go together like that. And then we can bring it down like that and set it into place. And if, for some reason, our linkage arm was forward and our pin was back, when we rotated that down and tried to close this together, we'd either break or bend that linkage arm back there. So we finish with this part. That's going to go in like that. Puncture valve is going to go up here. Trigger is going to go in there. So let's put our trigger here. Our trigger has a little pin on it right here. The front of our linkage arm down inside there has a hole in it. So we want to make sure that we slide the middle section over the pivot pin and then the linkage arm or the, the hole in the, the hole, the pin in the top of the trigger into the linkage arm itself. I can go in here, and then we just need to get these two connected, and we can't forget this. Like that. Like that. Now sometimes this will require you to move that back out and then drop it back in. However you need to be able to get it in there so that it lines up. If we look at the back side, we can see that our reg adjustment is perfectly inside of our cutout. It's not sitting up too high. Uh, that's a good sign that you haven't rotated this piece all the way down in and making sure that it's sitting flush. If this is sitting up, you know that that needs to drop further down. All right, so that's almost everything. Put our magazine catch in there. This right here, I know a lot of people don't even use this, so it's not necessary for your gun to function. All it is is a little pass through. You can actually see through this down into the gun um, when the halves are together and you can see if there's a ball in the breech. It's like a window into the breech to see if there's one sitting up inside of there. So again, it's not necessary to have it in there. Um, it just actually, you can keep dirt out. If you didn't have it in there, you'd have a hole into your breech. But I've seen a million people take these apart and lose this piece and they still survive. Safety, push our safety in, then we can go ahead and uh, reassemble everything. Front block, or front shroud, whatever you want to call it, barrel shroud, front block shroud. Set that in there. And then this is going to go in here, and this is going to actually. I am going to put this in here because I can remove it without disassembling the gun again, so that's not a big deal. All right, so let's go and put our half back on. What we need to do first is we need to remove this out, and when we do, hold it all together because it's easily explodable. It's a good descriptive word there, explodable. All right, so take our half. I'm going to give one last inspection through here, make sure everything looks like it should. Set my half on here. Now, before I push down, there's one thing that always happens on TPXs or TIPX guns. The, where is it? There it is. The bolt release, or the, the not the bolt, the mag release, which is right there, it'll fall over. So it's actually bent backwards and it's inside of here. What we need to do is take a pick or something and pull it back out so that the half can slide down. Otherwise, we won't be able to push the half down because this gets caught underneath it. Once that happens, we should be able to just close everything up and snap it all together. If you cannot just push everything together easily like that, something is out of alignment, is not right, Redo it and start over. It's not that big a deal. It's just only a couple minutes. There. Short screws in the front. Mid-length screws everywhere else but the middle top.
barrel in. And then typically we would put that back in and then rotate it into position. I'm going to leave it like that for right now. All right, so gun is back together. Let's look at the magazine real quick. The magazine is a pretty quick disassemble. You've got three screws on the outside. That's, that's not going to work with that screwdriver. It's too big. One. Greasy hand strikes again. Three. Once we get our three screws out, or actually four, never mind. There's one hiding at the bottom down here. That one came out much easier. One, two, three, four. Once we get those four out, there's a retainer clip at the top right here, which we will want to separate. A little flathead screwdriver, we can get in there and pop those two pieces apart. And that will let us separate this all out. All right, we've got, basically this is kind of like a gate at the top that works to keep the ball's in place, so they're not just jumping out, flying out. When this goes up into the gun, that little um, release pin that is inside here will push down on this and it will move the gate out of the way and uh, disengage the lock mechanism at the bottom, letting everything slide up as it should. When we go ahead and try to reassemble this, we are not going to try to put this in and compress it all down beforehand we're gonna put our two halves together. We're gonna to put the bottom screws in, the bottom two, and then we're gonna slightly separate it and drop all this stuff down in and then reassemble it. So we've got four major pieces inside here. We've got our spring, our guide that runs all the way down here. Let's pull that out. There, there. The bottom mechanisms are a lock at the bottom, and then the spring that it rides on, right there. So the spring just goes around this uh, little tab at the bottom, and then there is a hole that that is going to go into, and it is right here where my pin, where my pick is sitting. So this little lip or this little pin, tab, arm, whatever you want to call it, on the spring. It's going to go into that hole right there. So we'll drop it back in place like that and then line it up like that. So this should move back and forth like this and that spring should push it back out. And our arm is going to go in this way. This little, I'm going to call it a bill on the bottom right here, this little lever goes inside of this piece. So it actually is going to go in there like this. It does not face this direction towards the back of the magazine. I'm going to set that down right in there. All right, let's go put the spring back in then. So our spring is going to sit right up in here. And this part is going to go just like that. So first things first, we want to, um, it's, it might take you a couple tries to do this, but we want to compress the spring down and push it up in there, like that. There is a cutout section of this guide that the spring can sit in, but it also pushes up against the edge of this gate. So it pushes on both pieces at the same time so that as this drops down in, like this, it's doing two jobs. It is bringing the gate down so that the paintballs can come out, 
And it is also, if I hold this part at the bottom, I knew that was going to happen. But you can see the action at the bottom, how it's moving the gate, uh, not the gate, but the lock away so that um, it can it can unlock the magazine and release the follower so that it can slide up. So it's doing two functions at the same time. I don't recommend trying to do that at home. I'm lucky that when this spring popped out right now, it hit me in the chest and then fell down right in front of me. If it hadn't hit me and it flew over my shoulder or something, probably would have never found it. So that's what it's going to look like when reassembled. So let's take our half and we'll put it on. Again, we don't want to lock that part down. We just want to put it on enough to keep everything from going anywhere. So let's tighten this bottom one down. And obviously the only reason you would be taking the magazine apart in the first place is if it was dirty. Uh, you had dropped it, it's got sand in it, or it has paint on it for some reason, uh, broke a ball inside of it when feeding it or loading it, any of those things, you're using it and you broke a ball in the magazine or in the gun. Any, any of those, those options right there would really be the only reason you would need to take it apart. Uh, I don't recommend just taking it apart for the sake of taking it apart. All right, so uh, you can see that we've got those two in. I have not closed it down. It's still separatable at the top. That's going to give me the, an ability to put the spring in and then also to get my, my follower in there, like that. Now that this is in, I can snap the tops together. Make sure that everything is lined up. Looks good. Gate is working properly. And the only thing we'll do is once we put it together, is we will push the follower all the way down and lock it in place, and then make sure that it releases by activating the release tab on there. All right, so let's. Just use an Allen key to push this down. Actually, we can use our fingers. Pull it down. It's locked in place at the bottom. That works as it should. And then when this comes into the gun, if I push on it, it should release. Fingers crossed. There we go. So we know that that part's working right, this part's working right, and the gate is working right as well. All right, so that's it. Put it back together, magazine releases as it should, safety works as it should. The only thing we would do is gas the gun up, make sure it fires, and you're ready to go. So um, your TPX, TIPX is back together, magazine is clean, and you're ready to go out and play. Well guys, I hope this helps you out with any questions or concerns you have about your paintball gear or products. And as always, for all your paintball needs, shop ansgear.com.